welcome everybody to Appropriate Culture. And I have probably one of my favorite guests of all time, my father, Alcides Moraes. And I guess first things first, how you doing? Doing good. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. Hey, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while in physical um, form, but uh, it's always good to see you no matter what. I guess I'll do this first. I'll go ahead and do an introduction for you and we'll hit the ground running so people can get a little bit of a uh, idea of uh, you and then what we're going to be getting into for this podcast. Sounds and good. so I'll see this more ice, my father. Uh, here are some of the accreditations that uh, you had over your professional life. And it starts with graduating in physical education from the University of Sao Paulo. Uh, exercise physiologist by the American College of Sports Medicine, master in nutrition and health from the Faculty of Nutrition at UFG, Federal University of Goiás, doctoral student in health sciences at the Faculty of Medicine of Federal University of Goiás, professional experience in the field of personal training for individuals with metabolic syndrome, member of the research laboratory in clinical and sports nutrition, Faculty of Nutrition, Federal University of Goiás, and adjunct professor at Univers University of Paulista. Um, I think I covered it all, right? That's about right. There we go. There we go. So first things first, how you doing? Doing good. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, well, I'm excited to have you. Um, this is, I think, this is episode 20. Um, of the podcast. And so at this point, we've had a few different guests, but this is the first time that I'm interviewing somebody from my actual family. And um, I'm excited to have you on because I believe many people are going to be able to benefit from this conversation. Well, I hope so. Uh, congratulations on your 20th uh, interview. That's great. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. And so I know right now you're working on your PhD. Fill me in on what exactly are you focusing on your PhD and what does that entail for you? Well, we're studying um, something regarding uh, dietary fiber. So we know that dietary fiber is a very important thing for human health. We, we have studies being done for the last 50 years plus. Uh, so this is a very important part of our uh, diet, of our nutrition. Now, particularly the study that I'm doing has to do with the impact of a certain kind of fiber. It's a, a soluble kind of fiber called beta-glucan, and uh, it's found in foods like uh, oats and barley, and their impact on the lipid profile, the impact on cholesterol, on uh, HDL cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, and things like that. So, so that's what we're studying. That's what we're working on. And so, correct me if I'm wrong, but there are soluble and insoluble fibers in regards to what your body can actually uh, digest. Is that correct? That's correct. So, you do have uh, some fibers that, uh, like the, the name say, they can be broken down and others that they are not. The soluble fibers actually, they uh, become kind of a, a gum kind of a thing. So they have certain properties that, uh, for example, they can actually help with excreting more fat. And uh, through different mechanisms, you know, through bile that is being excreted and all of that. So potentially you can actually help to reduce total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol, which is a great thing in terms of uh, helping with the cardiovascular disease. Okay. So have you uh, found any interesting information that you weren't counting on from, is this, is this like your thesis? Is this, if I'm getting that, as far as what you're yeah, working on? that's part of it. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I found things that are new, but what we actually wanted to search is if uh, the actual food, oat, for example, 
would have a different impact on the lipid profile compared to just the isolated fiber, the beta glucan. Okay. Okay. So is it the beta glucan, the fiber, or is the food oats that actually actually have the most impact? So we're actually comparing the two of them. Okay. And so in, in the comparison, what what can you tell to a person who is not in the field, if you were to explain it in simple terms, what does this mean to the average person? Well, that's the thing. Um, many, many, you know, people and companies, they want to have a, a silver bullet. When I say a silver bullet, it's they want you, you to tell them, oh, you eat this particular thing and this particular thing will transform your right. life, your health. That market. And I personally do not believe that things work like that. So it's actually, you know, one particular type of food can be one more thing necessary to help you in your lifestyle. So it, are oats good? Absolutely. Are beta glucans good type of fiber? Absolutely. Are they the ones that are going to resolve all your health problems? No, no, yeah. they're not. Okay, so you do need to have a healthy kind of a lifestyle. And that would include eating properly, uh, exercising, sleeping, and having, you know, uh, minimizing stress in your life and things like that. So that kind of stuff, it's, a, it's a, a mixture of many, many things that will allow you to actually achieve a healthier life kind of lifestyle. And that will bring you great things in terms of, uh, you know, your health. Yeah. So correct me if I'm wrong, but you're in your mid 50s right now. Well, I'm going to be 57 in okay. about a month. So there we go. Uh, yeah, I'm getting closer to 60. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Uh, still looking good. Still looking on point. Yeah, thank you. Um, what would you, I know it's probably a longer answer. Take your time with it. But what would you, rec what would you say to people who are entering their second half of their, their life, so to speak, um, and what to focus on? in order to focus on what is going to get them results as opposed to the silver bullet marketing stuff that gets thrown at them? Well, we know that uh, it's impossible to um, stop aging. Okay, You don't stop aging. That does not exist. Uh, there is some research to, you know, that has been done and people, whoever, um, able to actually found a solution for aging so right. people would stop aging would be the richest person ever right that's not really reality right now what we can do is to have a certain kind of lifestyle that will allow us to age graciously okay i like one one uh, phrase used by the american college of sports medicine what they say not just adding years to your life, but adding life to your years. Okay, so that's really a very important thing. Uh, it's not that you're going to live forever, but whatever amount of years that you have here on earth, you can live with more quality. Okay? Yeah. So, what I would say is adopt. A healthier lifestyle because that will actually save you from a lot of pain, from a lot of uh, discomfort, from a lot of uh, bad situations as you get older. Yeah. We cannot avoid getting older, but we can have um, an older person that actually can enjoy life. Yeah. And what uh, it's really important at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I'm I'm coming up here on 30 this year. And if there's one thing that I can say is, you know, you're pretty much in trouble if you keep entering these mentalities of I'm going to do this for this time frame to look good for the summer or to look good for a photo shoot or 
wedding or whatever, um, I almost come to find out that that's pretty much always going to backfire because you have this sort of end mentality of when you're going to stop that better, that, that better part of yourself sticking to, um, having good, good decisions, uh, having good, uh, consistency on your decision-making when it comes down to your eating habits, your exercise habits. And so I can definitely stress without a doubt that doing this as a lifestyle is the only answer as opposed to you're, you're trying to get a certain result for a certain time frame. Um, have you seen any studies? Because I know you go through all kinds of studies um, that showcase at any point where a diet or a certain workout regimen for a certain time frame is actually beneficial long term, or is this pretty much a facade? So you do have, it, it depends on what you're looking for. Okay. So you hear a lot about stuff like ketogenic diet. Okay. So keto, keto yeah. Keto diet, the diet. Okay. So do you have some short term results with that in terms of losing weight? Yes, you do. In the long run, can we say for sure in the long run that this is a health, this is a healthy kind of diet? No, we cannot. Yeah. It doesn't matter whoever says that. We cannot say that in the long run is a healthy kind of diet. Okay. What we know that in, around the world, you have some areas called the blue zones. Those blue zones are areas where you have a great number of centenarians that are part of this society. Okay. So people that are at least 100 years old. So you, you have, for example, uh, one of those uh, blue zones is uh, Ikaria in Greece, Okinawa in Japan. Uh, you have a certain place in um, Sardinia in Italy. You have a, a place in Costa Rica, okay? And for the surprise of many people, you have actually a city in the U.S., that actually is among those blue zones. And this city is called Loma Linda. It's a small town of maybe 40,000 people in California. Okay. Now, what do we find in common about those particular places? They have a very large ingestion of vegetables, all kinds of vegetables, okay? they have very small ingestion of uh, animal products, okay? They are part of a society that feels like they have purpose in life. They, uh, when they are, they, they, they spend time with family and friends regularly, okay? So we see that there are some common traits that you find in all those places where you have people that live long lives and apparently healthier kind of lives yeah so there are some things that we can learn here so in terms of diet they are active people in terms of physically speaking but they are not people that are in the gym doing strength training necessarily yeah. okay they are people that are active throughout their day so they keep active they do uh you know physical work during their their day and they're not just sitting the whole day in front of a computer uh they eat tons of vegetables okay that's the base of their diets they eat very little of animal products hmm. so there you go we do have some nice clues here right there just looking at this particular place yeah. Okay. So we could say, and, and obviously there are many, many researches uh, where you can find the evidence that uh, a diet filled with fruit and vegetables is going to improve your health. Yeah. This is a, okay. If you reduce saturated fat in the long run, you will improve your health. And most of the saturated fat is found in animal products 
So you do have some clues. Okay, now you will have people saying any kind of a stuff uh, about diet, but we gotta look at the at the facts. You gotta look at the studies. You gotta look at the the facts in terms of where people um, live the most, live the longest, and and then you will find the real clues there. And so I know that you've been a vegan for, was it over 10 years now? It's close to 20 years, yes. 20 years, two decades, wow. Close to, not yet, 20. Um, and so as you probably know, Brandon, the other owner of the podcast, is vegan as well, a vegan chef, as a matter of fact. And so he's got his vegan cookbook, he's working on vegan recipes and different collaborations with restaurants. Um, what made you want to do the flip 20 years ago before it was even a cool thing to do and become vegan and cut out the animal products? Like what was the initial set that, that, that got you to cross over? Well, so pretty much what happened was I could see that my body did not respond as well as uh, it used to when I was hitting 40 years old. So I was, you know, hitting four years old, and I could see that uh, there were some things. I mean, I was not sick, but I had regular headaches. So I had uh, migraines at least a couple of times a week. Yeah. Uh, my digestion was not the greatest. Um, so always there was something about my digestion that was not good. Uh, I was starting to add fat in my body. So there were some things that I could tell that was not really working as well as it used to. Yeah. And, uh, and I knew that I had to make some changes. So, you know, being somebody that was always involved in the health and fitness uh, world, I, I knew that uh, what I ate made a difference. So the more I studied, the more I read, the more I, you know, talk, uh, you know, thought about things, the more I was convinced that something had to change, um, and uh, and I was not willing to start taking drugs. Yeah. Taking yeah. So yeah, that's a possibility, and that's what a lot of people choose. So I chose to change my lifestyle instead of start taking drugs. So drugs for me was not really an option. Uh, so I went with the one that seemed the most plausible for me. And it was to change my lifestyle. And that included to, to change some eating habits. And so at this point, would you say your research plus the lifestyle choices have pushed you in the direction where being vegan or going vegan do you think that's for everybody or do you think that's a case-by-case -case situation so that's a good question uh i'm not the type that comes around saying you gotta become a vegan you gotta become a vegan yeah uh, even though i do believe that a vegan lifestyle is very healthy what i do tell people is you gotta cut on animal products you yeah. gotta you gotta really cut on uh, simple carbs, refined carbs. Uh, so you gotta make some real changes, okay? Yeah. So if somebody comes to me and say, well, once in a while, you know, I eat a little beef. Once in a while, I have a little cheese or I have, you know, once in a while some eggs. Okay, it may be all right for that person, okay? I'm not saying that this person will have to cut every single thing. Now, most people, on the other hand, they actually, if they don't go radically, they have a real hard time knowing what's a little. Yeah. Okay? So when they say, I have a little of this, it means I have one meal per day that contains that. Yeah. So that's not a little. Of yeah. It. Okay. So. If you actually look at the average person, the average person can be in the US or Brazil or anywhere in the world 
this person pretty much will have saturated fat, okay, in every single meal that they eat. And I'll so, give you an example. yeah, please do. Yeah, I'll give you an example. So let's imagine the person wakes up in the morning and the person, you know, eats some eggs. There is saturated fat or eat some cheese uh, with their bread or some butter uh, or a glass of milk, okay? Saturated fats there. Yeah. Then they go for their uh, midday snack and they have a yogurt, saturated fats is there. Then they go for their lunch and they have a ham and cheese sandwich, saturated fats is there. Now yeah. mid afternoon and they're gonna have some kind of, uh, you know, um, a cake or or a, a, a type of a, of a croissant or anything like that that also you know involves butter and yeah. milk and things like that. Dinner they go for a steak because you know I didn't eat the steak, so I think I think I'm doing well because I didn't eat meat before. But that's not true. I ate saturated fat the whole day. And I'm ending the day with more saturated fats. Yeah. That's the problem. So because of this um, difficulty that people have to actually know what's little, sometimes I tell people, dude, just cut the stuff, go with the vegetables, go with the whole grain cereals, grains, uh, with the beans, with all this good stuff. You know, and uh, maybe if you're in a special dinner uh, at a special location for a special occasion, okay, then you may have a little bit of a, a beef or something that you enjoy, or maybe a fish once yeah. in a while. But the bottom line is most people have a hard time actually um, being able to control what is little. So it, it seems like, and I've seen this with personal experience, that it really becomes a matter of lack of knowledge, because in many cases, the, the, the person will have the intent to want to change, but like you said, kind of go throughout their day in a normal way and tell themselves, I'm easing it up or I'm taking it easy, but really, they're not. And you and I both know at the end of the day, results speak for themselves. And so you can say all you want to say, but if you're not experiencing the results, you know, it's, it's futile. And so what, what is a good way? So if a person is out there thinking that they're working on their, their decision making when it comes to food, but they still don't see results, what is a good way of being able to sort of double check what you're doing and uh, be able to highlight some of the places that are throwing you off your course? So I think if somebody is really struggling, I would say look for a professional uh, that has a more natural kind of approach towards eating. Okay, that's a very important thing because you have professionals that are going to prescribe you a bunch of supplements. Okay, a bunch of uh, diet supplements that uh, may not necessarily resolve your problem. Yeah. Most people are focused on, I need to lose weight, and that's a great thing. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is your health. So if you have your health as number one priority, the losing weight is going to be a consequence of changing to a healthier lifestyle. Yeah. The opposite is not necessarily true. Okay, yeah. you may lose some weight using a certain type of diet that in the long run is not going to be the healthiest. Right. So what I would say is look for a professional that has a more natural kind of approach towards eating and talk to this professional about what you can do to improve your health. Once you are improving your health, the consequence of that is going to be you're going to feel better. You're going to lose weight and you're going to uh, have a healthier kind of uh, body. Now, yeah. oh, I, I don't have the money to uh, hire a, a, a professional. It's fine. So when you're looking for 
uh, something online or a book to read, don't just go for the lose 10 pounds in 10 days. Yeah. Uh, you know, be careful with this kind of stuff because that's not necessarily the healthiest possible way of doing it. Look, start reading stuff about what's going to make me healthier and, um, and start actually reading stuff from people that are well known in terms of uh, that have done research for a long time. A, a, very, a very famous book that I advise anybody to read is a book called The China Study. Okay, I'm actually going to get the book here so that I can yeah, bring it up. Uh, show yeah. it to the people. You know, I'm not I'm not getting anything to show this book here. Okay, the Chinese study. Okay, this is a book that was um, written by Colin Campbell. Okay, T. Colin Campbell, PhD at Cornell University, a man that is approaching 90 years old now, has done research his whole life. Okay, this is the kind of stuff that you should be looking at. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, there, there is a, 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 an incredible website called uh, Nutrition Facts. Okay, Nutrition Facts. It's by Dr. Uh, Greg, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Gregor. I uh, forgot his, his uh, first name, but Michael, Michael Gregor. Okay. So uh, he has this website called Nutrition Facts. This is the kind of stuff that you should be, you know, these are people that have done their homework, okay? They are not just blogger, bloggers, bloggers yeah. that are just uh, throwing their two cents. Uh, you know, oh, you know, here, here's what you should uh, be doing because you work for me. Work for me in which sense? Yeah. Is this based on hardcore science, uh, the findings? So these are, you know, the kind of sources that I would say, go after it, read this kind of stuff, okay? and, and you'll find some, some interesting things. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, it's, it's a plethora of content coming out every single day of 10 ways to lose body fat, six ways to get ripped in, you know, in one week. Uh, and it's, all, it's really just a bunch of marketing, really. Uh, it's really what it comes down to is, and it sounds attractive, but when it comes down to it, it doesn't have much substance. Now, sure, I, I've talked to you about it before where I feel like you have to take this on where you need to have a real, I don't want to necessarily say passion, but you need to want to learn when it comes to this topic because there's so much to go through that if you don't have a natural, you know, ability to want to go into it yourself you're doing it for yourself you're just not going to be able to decipher what's the bs from the good stuff um what i would like to say is aside from tests now i've been fortunate to grow up with a father like you who has brought me up into doing all kinds of activities sports uh eating well i've noticed that my meals are a lot like yours now even when i'm not living with you Aside from the meats that I eat, because I still eat meat, um, but it's a whole lot of rice, beans, vegetables, accompanied by some type of meat that goes along with it. And I've noticed that those are the meals that make me feel my best. Those are the meals that really recharge me. And on a personal level, I can say that even if it wasn't about going into studies, if you truly just try to get in sync with your body and how you feel and truly pay attention to it. I feel like you can get a lot figured out just by actually listening to your body because your body will tell you straight up, this is working, this is not working. And yeah. yeah. That, that is a, a way of doing it. The, the real uh, challenge with this approach is that for many people, they always ate in a certain way that they cannot really tell uh, what is the best uh, way for their body to work. Sure. So they lack uh, 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 um, a point where they feel this is great. Okay. So sometimes what they need is to get some initial direction 
about where to go, how to do things, and stick to that plan for a little bit so they it can actually uh, reboot their bodies. Yeah. Because their bodies are so used to eating in a certain way that they cannot really, they, they don't know different. Uh, so, so that's the challenge. So yeah. yes, if you are really in touch with your body and has been in touch with your body, how your body works and how it feels and all of that, yes, it is a good, a good thing to do. The challenge is when you never had this really clear for you in your, in your life. Yeah. Then it becomes a little bit more of a challenge. So for the, for the people who fall in that category, who didn't have a great upbringing with their parents, teach them the correct ways of what to eat, how to exercise, all, the, all that good stuff. Aside from getting a professional, in this case, let's just say they don't have the, the means to do that. What would be your, your advice? Would it be to just go and find some of these books that you're talking about and start from there or... Where yeah, I do think that a good place to start is to looking at some very solid scientific sources. So like what I said, nutritionfacts.org, good site for you to start with. They have short videos, okay. short videos, easy for you to listen to, packed with scientific information. Get books like The China Study, okay, T. Colin Campbell okay phd good stuff so those are books that are gonna books and websites that are gonna start, help you to kind of get a direction and mm -hmm. start understanding what is behind health okay what's behind a, a healthy lifestyle and then from there you are definitely going to have a world of information yeah but at least you're starting with something that is scientific and it's not just, well, this diet worked for me. Maybe you should try. I lost 20 pounds in 20 days. You know, that kind of stuff, so you've got to be careful with that. Yeah, no, I agree. And so you're in Brazil as we speak. Right. And um, one thing I noticed is the Bra Brazil is heading sort of in the same direction that the United States has been in regards to obesity. True. What do you think are some of the detrimental factors pushing societies in that direction? Well, that's a very complex uh, question. Uh, I don't think the United States is the only place, okay, that has a problem with obesity, like you just mentioned. The United States may have been the one that got that first. First, yeah. Okay? There are no countries around the world where the population is not getting happier. You have no countries around the world where the population is not getting happier. Yeah. Okay. Now in Brazil, over 50% of the population, of the adult population, over 18, is overweight. 20% of the population is obese. Okay. And of every five kids, three, Three, uh, three out of five kids between the age of four and seven mm -hmm. are overweight. So that's that's a serious thing. Yeah. Is it in the U.S.? No. And the same trend is happening all over the world. So this is a concerning factor. Okay, we got to do something. Now something has happened. Okay from the 80s on uh, to now, that it has made the, 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 the weight of the population really change. Is there a, 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 a factor regarding physical activity? Yes, for sure there is, but it's more than that, okay? There is stuff that we're eating, stuff that we're consuming or drinking, that is certainly not helping us. When I was a kid, okay, in school, uh, a, a class of 40 kids, you would have one, maybe two kids, here in Brazil I'm talking, okay, mm -hmm. that were a little bit on, you know, overweight and a little bit, you 
know, on the fat side. Nowadays, we're talking about over half of the kids in this school age yeah. are overweight. So we have a real problem here. And I personally believe it starts with the pregnancy, okay? Women that have poor eating habits, they will pass this to their kids, okay? We have a bunch of studies showing that the impact that the the, the, the lifestyle regarding eating that the mother had and the impact that that has on the kid. Yeah. So that's one fact. So some kids, I mean, they are born with very little chance of succeeding in this aspect. Right. Because from, from, their, from, from their mother's womb, they already had, a, they were in, in this disadvantage. Right. So, so, and then it continues the lifestyle, eating stuff that you're not supposed to be eating, drinking stuff that you're not supposed to be uh, drinking, yeah. sitting, in front, sitting in front of the TV all day long, playing video games or computer, um, you know, YouTube and whatever. Yeah. We're talking about some serious things here. And, and, and that has a, a real impact on, on people's, not only longevity, but quality of life. So nowadays, you have uh, kids of 10, 11, 12 years old that have diabetes type 2. Now, diabetes type 2 was something that, in my, when I was a kid, it was something that only old people would have. Okay? Yeah. Nowadays, you have young preteens that are already plagued with diabetes type 2. Yeah. And diabetes type 2 is completely lifestyle related. Yeah. Okay? So it's not a genetic thing. That's diabetes type 1. Okay? Diabetes type 2, it's, it's lifestyle. So we're, we're in big trouble. I mean, man, this is a tough one because as a kid, you don't really have much of a say on the upbringing on where you where you're born with your, your parents and I guess I mean I've told you a story before where I was in Florida for the uh, NASA uh, NASA la uh, launch where basically they were sending a spaceship out into outer space and uh, it was a bunch of people coming up to one of their areas and to watch it and I remember seeing many people there but it was a uh, sort of a buffet style table where there was all kinds of foods uh mostly just sort of like um what do you want to call it? like summer type uh barbecue type food so it had some burgers some fries that kind of stuff and they also had a few like fruits and but had the cookies not all no chips all that kind of stuff uh i physically remembered this where there was this family they were pretty overweight um everything on their plate was french fries burger chips none of the quote-unquote healthy stuff and i remember seeing this little boy who was also pretty overweight sneak in between his parents and try to grab an apple as he grabbed the apple the dad turned around grabbed the apple from his hand and put it back in the thing the kid then ran around the mother tried to grab it again and they once again took the apple from his hand and put it back on the table. And so, I mean, at this point, the, the ignorance is blatant as opposed to, you know, you can't even make up the idea that it's about the greater good. In many cases, it's a sad case of you were brought up the incorrect way. True, true. Um, what do you say about that? Of, uh, genetics and the environment. So it's a mixture of the both. So yeah, if you are inheriting some things from your parents, being in your genes or being in the habits that you have at home, whatever it is, it's going to have an impact in your life. That's for sure. Yeah. And so, I mean, it, this is a situation where, once again, I, I feel very fortunate to have not have to you know, deal with this, the circumstances in regards to my upbringing. 
if you would give advice to somebody who has grown up in an environment where they were not set up for success in this area, let's just say under 18, what would you recommend how they go about it to try to turn things around? Well, I certainly, uh, I'm a strong believer that it does not matter your age. You can change whatever you want to change in your life. Is it easy? No. If it was easy, nobody would have problems of being overweight or being obese. Nobody would have problems with addictions. Uh, it's not easy. Is it possible? Absolutely. So there are some things that are really important. Number one, start surrounding yourself with people that want the same things that you do, okay? So that's a very important thing. Some studies have shown that we end up being the average of the five people we hang out with the most. Yeah. Okay? In our thinking, in our habits, in the way that we see the world. Finances. And, and so, so that's a very important thing. Surround yourself with like-minded people, people that also want to be healthy, people who also want to do things in a certain way. So that will help you. Number two, uh, start doing something together, okay? So if you guys want to achieve cer certain things, start educating yourself and start challenging, you know, each other about doing that thing. Yeah. Hold each other accountable, okay? So find a, a buddy that will hold you accountable about how yeah. you're doing in that particular area in your life. Yeah. And um, more importantly, do not give in to your emotions, okay? That's a real problem. Because if we give in to our emotions, and if we let that feeling of, uh, well, today I'm not feeling good, so I'm going to allow myself to you know, eat yeah. what I'm not supposed to, drink yeah. what I'm not supposed to. That kind of stuff will plague whatever decision that you have made before. So do not give in to your emotions. If you are tempted to eat something, number one, clean your house from whatever you know is not good for you. Yeah. So if you have a house that is full of cookies, chips, and sweets and candies and booze and this and that and the other thing guess what that's what you're going to end up eating well but you know i'm not eating daily this kind of stuff well you will end up eating there will be a day where you're going to come home craving for that particular kind of food if you have yeah. a home you will eat it yeah you just uh -huh. clean your 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 your, your closets just clean your refrigerator for, from stuff that you know is not good for you yeah and just put good food in your house that it's a big big step um, so those are some little things here that i believe can really be helpful find a crowd that wants to go in the same direction you want to go find a buddy that is going to hold you accountable to doing what's right do yeah. not be <laughs> Hang on your emotions, how you feel, and do what's right, and clean your house from bad food, from bad drinks. Yeah. Okay. Just pack on the good stuff. Yeah, I agree. Um, Brendan and I have that relationship where I'll start a new, um, you know, some new little fitness challenge. Uh, that will, you know, kind of kick things up to the next level and we'll either get each other involved and one of us will start doing it, which will then propel the other one to just hop on on the spot and just start doing it, you know. And so this type of stuff is, it, it, it's infectious. So it will, it will take over the environment in a healthy way, meaning healthy competition where people are trying to not get left behind. 
And actually, that was a study that I once uh, read into, which was the fastest way for people to step out of being an obese level in their own personal lives was to be in an environment where everybody else was healthier than them. There you go. But here's the thing. Going back to what you said about being emotional and falling into your emotions and how you feel nowadays, society across the board tells you you're perfect just the way you are. You're beautiful no matter what size you are. You know, you're, you're, you're fabulous, even if you are 350 pounds and you can barely walk. And so do you feel like there is there's a bad route to go in that direction where we just want to make everybody feel good despite what they're doing i i never really go um towards the direction of uh, looks okay because looks like i said you can you can have somebody who looks great but the health is not really that great yeah. Because what the person is eating in the long run may not be the most important thing. So when I talk about uh, losing weight, if you need to lose weight, it's not because you're going to look better. Okay, Looking better is going to be a consequence of you being healthier. I do care about people being healthier because that's going to spare you from a lot of pain in your life. Right. But that's the line though, right? Like that's the that's the line that I believe is getting really blurred out. It's, it's, it's not black and white anymore. It's very gray as opposed to being easy to understand where where people fall on that line and what they should focus on. Because, you know, look at bodybuilders. They've built their bodies into things that you would be like, wow. And some of them are dying at 40 years old. And then you also have circumstances where people are incredibly out of shape and they're being told in real life, you're a beautiful girl. Keep doing just what you're doing. You're fabulous. This is more like a woman thing. Men don't really do that to themselves. Actually, let's dive into that for a second. I've noticed a real surge in women wanting to go out of their way to make all the other women feel good about themselves no matter what. I don't normally see that amongst men. I do see men being a little bit more firm, be like, nah, you need to lose some weight, dude. Like, it's just not good for you. Um, have you, one, seen this in society? And if so, why do you think that is? Oh, for sure. You know, you will have all different kinds of, uh, you know, focus that people will have towards somebody else. Okay. As a professional, my 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 point here is not to you know talk about uh how somebody looks or doesn't look uh, my idea is more regarding health so if somebody needs to lose weight somebody needs to lose weight oh but i like being big okay it's a choice but you need to lose weight because that is uh, jeopardizing your you, health. You've heard people say that? I like being big? Oh, yeah. There are some people that uh, say that. Now, I don't care. You believe care when they say I that? And it's fine. Okay, you, can, you, you, are, you are a free person. You will uh, make the decisions you want. Now, the real deal is not about your appearance. It's about health. Now, is your health important to you? Somebody may say, I don't care. I just want to enjoy life. And some people feel like enjoying life has to do with, you know, just doing whatever, eating whatever, drinking whatever. So people will have different approaches towards life. Uh, personally, as a professional, my, my uh, responsibility is to tell people, look, your um blood profile does not look good okay you are a candidate to have cardiovascular disease you are a candidate to become a diabetic okay so it's my place to tell people 
as a professional, I would advise you to change your lifestyle. Now, what the person is going to do, that's up to her. Yeah. Uh, some people will take the route of, I don't want to change my lifestyle. Just give me a pill. Okay. So the person will have to look for a doctor who's going to give her a pill. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't want to change my lifestyle. It's a choice that people make. That's the beauty of living in a free society. You choose. So to me, I, I don't really get too involved in the whole how you look and how you don't look. Uh, to me, the important thing is, look, as a professional, here's the situation. You need to do some changes in order to be, uh, to stay uh, healthier, to live longer, to be with the people you love the longest. Now, if you don't care about that, okay, it's your choice. You have been told the reality. You do whatever you want to do with that reality. Right. I mean, it, it does ring some bells. Uh, I've been reading a book called The Rise and Fall of the Greek Empire. And in that book, I'm not sure if you read it, but it becomes quite apparent of what happens when you're constantly giving into your emotions. And so just a little bit of a background, the essence of the book essentially plays out where the Greek empire had come to immense success as far as taking over and overpowering other nations because of their work ethic and because of what they pushed themselves to be prior to even stepping onto that place completely putting aside um, the uh, needs of, of what, what they want to do, but as opposed to focusing on what they need to do. Now, I'm not saying that taking over nations is a good or a bad thing. My point is, is the fall of the Greek empire was after they have taken over all of these lands and immense success and having all these resources and now being able to just party it up utilize the resources, give in to all their emotions, eat this, drink that, go watch this, enjoy that. And that's where the fall started. In many ways, I see this correlation happening with many countries like the United States, where the, the good fight to set up this great lifestyle has been put ahead. And now we are experiencing the fruits of living a luxurious life, let's be honest. And um, in many ways, it's really hurting our society. And so I'm not sure if you agree with this, but would you say that in some cases, it, it's, it's really upon us to, to navigate through the lifestyle that is constantly available to us, but have to learn that just because it's available, you don't have to partake. That's a good point. Uh, I think, uh, unfortunately, most people, they think that they need to do and they need to be what everybody else does and what everybody else is. And that's not the fact. No. Okay? So you, the beauty of living in a free world is exactly that you can make your choices. You can, you know, live life in the way that you want to live life. Now, we do have this mentality, and, and this is not new, like you just said. I think you were talking about the Roman Empire, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's not a new thing. Uh, hedonism is, is a way of thinking where pleasure comes first. Yeah. Okay? So um, societies have really gone downhill because pleasure came first. Pleasure ruled. Okay, so what I'm after is just pleasure and pleasure. Now, is it, does it mean that you will never have pleasure in anything in life? No, it does not mean that. But when you are ruled by having pleasure, then you probably will start getting into some very tricky areas yeah. regarding how you live uh, and regarding the consequences of your actions. Yeah. So if you're just after pleasure, and that can be in any area, it can be pleasure about eating, 
pleasure about drinking, about drugs, about sex, about uh, you know partying, whatever. Uh, so you, you do need to be careful with that. That should not rule your life. Yeah. Um, pleasure is something that should have its place at the proper time, at uh, the proper circumstances. But we should not be ruled by pleasure. Yeah. Uh, the thing that I have learned in life is that I need to learn to have pleasure in doing the right things. Yeah. Instead of uh, letting my feelings take me to a certain direction. Yeah. So if I just let my feelings take me to a certain direction, that's a very problematic kind of way of living my life. But if I decide, okay, the direction I want to go is this, and I start learning to have pleasure in doing that thing, yeah. that really transforms my life. It really does, because yeah. Now it's not just a matter of uh, this is fun. It's a matter of appreciating the results of the discipline that I'm going, putting myself through and harvesting the, the fruit of my hard labor, of my work. This is very, uh, very important for men. And yeah. when I talk about men, I'm talking men and women. Yeah. Uh, this is an important thing. You feel that you are going in a certain direction, that you are, you are, you are, you are achieving something. And it's going to be difficult to, to, to achieve something if the only thing you're after is pleasure. Yeah. Well, I think this is a fantastic point to, uh, you know, wrap things up. We're coming up here at the top of the hour. Um, I appreciate the insight as always. Um, it's been a very um, knowledgeable talk. And once again, I appreciate you coming out. I guess first things first, I know you don't have social media, but if people were to want to catch up with you and and be involved with what you're doing. Is there a place where they can find you, links or something like that? Or I am on LinkedIn. Okay. So you can look for Alcides Morais there. Uh, I am on LinkedIn. Uh, and I can leave my email address if somebody wants to contact me. Cool. So uh, it's A L L S M O R a i s at yahoo.com.br as in brazil okay i'll be happy to hear from you perfect well i'm gonna put those links on the description when the episode comes out uh, once again dad i appreciate you uh you. and i love you very much i look forward to seeing you and mom during this christmas in a few That'll months be wonderful we look forward to that yeah i love you man Thank you again for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Of course. And so here you have it, guys. Um, another great episode. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy. Fantastic. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode from Appropriate Culture. If you want to watch other episodes, make sure to make your way to appropriateculture.com. You can also hang out with us on other social media platforms. They're all in the link in the description. And aside from that, if you want to listen to the podcast on other platforms like Audible, um, Spotify, any of those, you can also find us there as well. Link in the description. Take it easy, guys. Have a good day.